Okay, the second part of looking at velocity time graphs is going to look at a couple of specific examples. First, we're going to look at what happens and what it means when a velocity time graph actually goes into the negative. We're going to think about that for a second. So, in this first section here, we can see we've got um, a vehicle or a person, whatever object, accelerating at a constant rate until they reach 2.5 metres per second, and that takes 3 seconds. At that point, then they immediately start to decelerate. So over the next few seconds, their velocity comes back to zero. So you've got to remember, whenever you hit this axis, this zero, that means the object is now stationary. At this point, it now has a velocity of zero meters per second. It has stopped. When it goes beyond this point, its velocity is negative. Now, Remember, velocity takes into account direction, not just the speed. So what this means when it goes negative is, in fact, it is accelerating just back in the opposite direction. When it gets to this point here, then it reaches a constant velocity just in the opposite direction of 2.5 metres per second. So it could be a car accelerating away, slowing down, coming to a stop, then reversing, accelerating, and then reversing at a constant velocity. Next, what we're going to look at is how we calculate the distance uh, that has been travelled by the object on a velocity time graph. And we actually calculate the distance by working out the area. It kind of makes sense, because if you think um, distance equals speed times time, and if we're working out the area under this graph, you end up timesing the velocity, the uh, y-axis, by the x-axis. So you end up with velocity times time, and that's distance. Okay, so we're going to look at those examples now. So we're going to start off by looking at the distance travelled throughout section B. So that's when the vehicle, or whatever it is, is travelling at a constant velocity um, from this point here. So we effectively need to split this into a rectangle underneath like this, work out the height, work out the length, and we can see that the height of this is 4, or 4 metres per second, the length of it is 7 seconds, so if we time those together, we can work out the distance travel was 28 metres in that section. If we're looking at any of the other sections, we have to make it a little bit more complicated, but only as complicated as finding out the area of a triangle. If we were to look at section A, we have our triangle here, we still found out the height and the base, but remember the area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. So in this example, you would have a half times 8 times 4, which would give you 16 metres. So in section A, they travelled 16 metres. For section C, you'd actually split it into two shapes. You'd split it into a rectangular base and then a triangle on the top. And if you find the total area there, then you find the distance travelled in section C. And then for section D, we'd have a triangle like this. So it would be, again, half base times height, half times 11 times 8, and that will get you the total distance travelled throughout that journey. So we can see if we calculate everything together... We have 16 metres from this section, 28 from this section, 12 plus 10.5 from this section, and 44 from this section. If we add them all up, then we get the total distance travelled from the whole journey. And you can always break down a velocity time graph into as many sections as you like, as long as you add them all up at the end.